I'd like to talk about sleep and chronic pain. Sleep is utterly vital. Sleep is the time when we restore from, and in fact, your whole body, but most, in mostly your brain restores from all the work that you do while you're awake. One of the main issues, one of the main drivers of chronic pain is when the pain starts to interfere with your sleep. And this is well known that if you cannot restore, you run your marathon at night, you toss and turn, get up in the morning, you're fatigued, you think, oh my God, it affects your mood, and then and it winds up your pain, and you get into this vicious pain cycle. So everybody who has chronic pain knows that. They just know I feel so tired, and you just you really are worried about uh, trying to get to sleep because you end the day exhausted. Absolutely need to you lie down and just toss and turn and so on. One of the traps is that you go along and you see your doctor and you say, "Look, I need. I'm not getting sleep," and the doctor prescribes a sleeping tablet. Now, the sleeping tablet is a great example of something that gives with one hand, takes with the other. What it gives is it gives a few hours of sleep. What it takes away is your ability to have natural quality sleep. And uh, that's a major, major problem because once you've been on a sleeping tablet, especially taking it every night, for four weeks, when you try and withdraw, ping, you will be wide awake and you will, or after four weeks already, you are starting to become addicted to the sleeping tablet. And there's no sleeping tablet around which does not do this. Now, those are sleeping tablets. There is another group of medications which I'll just mention, and these are low dose tricyclic antidepressants. And the best known is amitriptyline and nortriptyline. These are different. These are something that is perhaps worth looking at because what they do is they will dial down your pain system and they, so therefore you'll have less pain. They relax you, relax your mind, relax your muscles. They help you get off to sleep and they're non-addictive. So this is something worth looking at. But more important than that is to actually learn something. I remember back to school, and I remember this may be my upbringing in South Africa, where it was a big thing was to talk about hygiene. Hygiene was how to keep things clean and, and keep yourself clean. Well, there is a concept called sleep hygiene, and sleep hygiene is one of the most important things you need to do to help your sleep. I'll go through the steps. The first is, it is completely natural, completely natural that you sleep. Everybody, it's a God-given right that you have the ability to sleep and it's absolutely necessary. So given the right circumstances, all of us can and will sleep, natural. Secondly, you need to set a time when you go to bed. That time is the same. You don't say, oh, I'm feeling tired, I'll go 8.30, oh, I'm feeling great, I'll go 11.30. You set a time, and that time is invariable because you are training your mind that this is the time when you're going to go to bed and wind, wind everything down. Prior to that, you do not have anything that's likely to stimulate you. So you don't have coffee, tea, and interestingly, this is from the other side, you don't use alcohol to try and help you get off to sleep, because again, this is a, it's a false thing. Again, giving and taking. So you don't use alcohol to help you get to sleep. And you stay away from, you don't watch exciting 
television programs or programs that really get your mind working or freak you out, nothing like that. Don't watch the news, don't watch uh, um, uh, horrible, uh, so, like so, so many of the, of the, of the scary uh, programs on TV. So you just calm, maybe read a quiet little book, then you have a hot shower and this or a hot bath, even better if you've got a bath, and you soak in it or you let the hot water run over your body and this is relaxing, putting you into a quiet phase and relaxing everything in your body and again it's part of this habitual process that you're setting up. You go straight from that to bed, you lie down in bed and you find a comfortable position, you focus on your breathing and you tell yourself it is completely natural for me to sleep. Completely natural. And then you just start with gentle breathing and as you breathe out you start at your toes and each time you breathe out you say to your toes now you're relaxed and you're feeling comfortable and you slowly move up your body and as you move up your body you will find at a certain point you drift off to sleep. In the beginning, it's like anything else, in the beginning it's harder, but as you train yourself you'll find that you fall asleep quicker and quicker and hopefully then you have a decent night's sleep. So this is setting you up to do everything you can to get into the state where your birthright, which is natural sleep, where you can have that and you just drift off and go off to sleep. If you want to, get, if you want to learn more about how to get back to a fully engaged, wonderful life, then please go to lifeafterpain.com.